Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer on this Monday morning. I'm so glad you're able to join Tom and I with Resurrection Lutheran Cooperative Ministry. Uh, it's just a great way to start our day, is it not? Um, I know some of you kind of catch up later on, and I'm always glad when you are able to even to do that. So it's just any time to hear the word of the Lord is great. So let us begin. We, as we've been doing uh, the rest of the other weeks in, um, uh, in Lent, we will begin with our litany. They took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloths. At his birth, our Savior was wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger. At his death, the body was taken down from the cross. He was wrapped in linen burial cloths and laid in the rest in a borrowed tomb. Christ is the Holy One through whom the world was made. And all things serve him, Christ the Son, on whom our sins were laid. In baptism, we were buried with Christ and raised to new life with him. We have put on Christ. Lord Jesus, forgive us when we try to cover up our sins and guilt. Only you take our sin away and clothe us in righteousness. Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate that he might take away the body of Jesus, and Pilate gave him permission. So they took the body of Jesus and bound it in linen cloth with the spices. On Easter morning, Peter and John ran to the tomb. Peter entered the empty tomb and saw the linen cloths lying there and the face cloth folded up in a place by itself. John also, also went in and he saw and believed. When John sent Adam and Eve out of the garden, he clothed them with skins of animals. Now Jesus the Lamb has been sacrificed for us and we are clothed in his righteousness. I looked and behold a great multitude standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes and palm branches in their hands. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Once wrapped in linen bands and in a manger laid, then linen wrapped his nail-pierced hands, our debt of sin was paid. Our reading today comes from Luke, the second chapter. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augusta that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, with, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no place for him in the inn. We'll now continue with our morning prayer. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is near to those who call on him. O come, let us worship him. O oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise the loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth. The heights of the hills are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. O oh, come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is near to those who call upon him. O oh, come, let us worship him. Our psalm today is Psalm 145. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and great to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another, and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendor of your majesty and all your marvelous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts, and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the, the remembrance of your great goodness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone, and his compassion is over all his works. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom and speak of your power, that the peoples may know of your power and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. 
Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Your dominion endures throughout all ages. The Lord is faithful in all his words and merciful in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all those who fall and he lifts up those who are bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon you, O Lord, and you give them their food in due season. You open wide your hand and satisfy the needs of every living creature. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving in all his works. The Lord is near to those who call upon him, to all who call upon him faithfully. He fulfills the desire of those who fear him. He hears their cry and helps them. The Lord preserves all those who, he, uh, who love him, but he destroys all the wicked. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord. Let all flesh bless his na holy name forever and ever. Let us pray. Loving Father, you are faithful in your promises and tender in your compassion. Listen to our hymn of joy and continue to satisfy the needs of all your creatures, that all flesh may bless your name in an everlasting kingdom, where you with your Son and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. We continue in Jeremiah in the 24th chapter, beginning with verse 1. After Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, had taken into exile from Jerusalem Jerichoam, the son of Jer Jer Jerichoam, king of Judah, together with the princes of Judah, the craftsmen and the smiths, and, and had brought them to Babylon, the Lord showed me this vision. Behold, two baskets of figs placed before the temple of the Lord. One basket had very good figs, uh, like r first ripe figs, but the other basket had very bad figs so bad that they could not be eaten. And the Lord said to me, What do you see, Jeremiah? I said, Figs. The good figs very good, and the bad figs very bad, so bad that they cannot be eaten. Then the word of the Lord came to me. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Like these good figs, so I will regard as good the exiles from Judah, whom I have sent away from the place to the land of the Chaldeans. I will set my eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them back to this land. I will build them up and not tear them down. I will plant them and not uproot them. I will give them a heart to know that I am the Lord and they shall be my people and I will be their God for they shall return to me with their whole heart. But thus says the Lord, like the bad figs, which are so bad <coughs> they cannot be eaten, so will I uh, treat Zedekiah, the king of Judah, his princes and the re remnants of Jerusalem who remain in the land and those who dwell in the land of Egypt. I will make them a whore on all the kingdoms of the earth to be a reproach, a, bit, a byword, a taunt, and a curse to all the places where I shall drive them, and I shall send sword, famine, and pestilence upon them until they shall be utterly destroyed from the land which I gave them to their fathers. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. And our second reading comes from Romans, the ninth chapter, beginning with verse 19. You will say to me then, why does he still find fault? From whom can resist his will? But who are you, a man, to answer back to God? Will what as a, a, is molded say it to another molder? Why have you made me this? Uh, thus, have the potter no right over the clay to make out the same lump one vessel for beauty and another for menial use? What if God, desiring to show his wrath and make known his power, has endured with much patience the vessels of wrath made for destruction in order to make known the riches of his glory for the vessels of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory, even us whom he has called, not from the Jews only, but, for, but also from the Gentiles, as indeed he says to Hosea, those who were not my people I will call my people, and her who was not beloved, I will call my beloved. And in the very place where it was said to them, You are not my people, they will be called sons of the living God. And Isaiah cries out concerning Israel, Though the number of the sons of Israel be as the sand in the sea, only a remnant of them will be saved. For the Lord will execute his sentence upon the earth with rigor and dispatch. And as Isaiah predicted, If the Lord of hosts had not left us children, we would have feared like Sodom and be made like Gomorrah. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness have attained it, and that is righteousness though through faith? But that Israel, who pursued the righteousness which is based on the law, did not succeed in fulfilling the law. Why? Because they did not pursue it through faith, but as if they were based on words. 
They have stumbled over the stumbling stone as it is written, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone that will make men stumble, a rock that will make them fall, and he who believes in him will not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. In many and various ways, God spoke to the people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. Bless, uh, let justice run like water and righteousness like an overflowing stream. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our lives. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. And the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high, shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory Glory to the the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Let justice roll down like water, and righteousness like an overflowing stream. Let us pray. Father of love, source of all blessing, help us to pass from our old life of sin to the new life of grace. Prepare us for the glory of your kingdom, We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord Almighty and everlasting God, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we might not fall into sin nor be overcome in adversity. And in all that we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord Almighty bless us and direct our days and our deeds in his peace. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining Tom and I on this Monday morning. And I hope you have a safe and blessed day. And I hope you'll join us tomorrow morning too. God bless you. Bye-bye.